Hello and good morning. Welcome to Friday Morning Fuel. It's been a little while. I'm Coach Matt, your program manager for your Exo site, uh, your Power Fitness Center. Today we have uh, a lot going on um, because we're going to talk about batch cooking today. So want to check in with you all with uh, your, your New Year's resolutions or goals that you may have made. We are halfway through the year, so that was a good time to kind of check in and see how that is all going. If not so well, good news, you still have time. If you're doing great, awesome. I commend you on that. I'd love to hear your story. Um, for today, I want to readdress something that we did talk about our first Friday morning fuel of the year, and that's kind of meal prep, and part of meal prep is batch cooking. I know a lot of, uh, a lot of individuals, individuals have issues with meal prepping because they're like, oh, I don't want to eat the same thing all the time. Um, there, is a, there is a substitute for that. We don't have to eat the same thing all of the time. Uh, we can work to um, vary our, our meals, but still be able to uh, prepare food, take it to work, and make sure that we are kind of staying on track with our, with our nutrition goals. So we're going to kind of talk about that all today. Uh, the main theme today is we're going to make five different dishes uh, pretty much with all the same ingredients with the, with the same base of chicken and rice. So probably the ultimate meal prep food, chicken and rice right here. So we will um, kind of take this challenge of, of five different meals and, and see how we get on. All right. So we've got our meal prep containers just so we can, you know, Fully simulate what's going on here. So we've got five different uh, meals. So we're going to do Monday through Friday. Um, I, just as a little caveat, I am I'm doing this in smaller <laughs> portions because it is Saturday, I've, or it is Friday, tomorrow Saturday, um, and we'll be out of town for the long weekend. So I'm not going to make a whole bunch of food, but I'm going to give you the general gist of, of what we're doing here. So, um, main thing, we usually start with the chicken. Um, so I know everybody's all about the air fryer these days, and hopefully, um, you know, if you've, if you've made the investment in the air fryer, it has some other functions on it. Um, if you have the Instant Pot, the Ninja, whatever else is, is out there, um, we have one of those, and it has a pressure cooker on it as well. So we usually just buy a whole chicken, put it in the pressure cooker. Um, it's about six, seven minutes per pound of chicken. Um, and that makes that chicken really, really nice and easy to shred up. Um, we found shredded chicken is very easy for meal prep, very versatile. Try not to season it too much uh, because we do want just the base of chicken, and then we can kind of season it for our different dishes. Bonus of that is that you do get some bone broth and have a little bit of that here as well. Um, so kind of all the juices that come out of that chicken, um, you kind of leave in there, put all the bones from the chicken as well, and uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, make bone broth from that. <laughs> okay, uh, we can do a separate issue, a separate episode on that if you if you need more. But <clears throat> anyways, kind of dual purpose. So um, of course, if you are a vegetarian or if you choose a non-meat uh, diet, we don't have to go with chicken. We can certainly do this with a variety of other. Um, we can do this with lentils, we can do this with beans, you can do this with a variety of all those. Kind of again, just give you the, the basic idea. This is all pretty interchangeable. You can do it with beef, you can do it with tofu, you can do it however you want to do it. All right, so let's start with uh, number one, probably the most basic, which I'm sure you've already gone to, uh, chicken and rice, right? So first thing always, you know, wash your hands, wash your vegetables. So we're just going to do, I don't have a whole lot of chicken, so I'm just doing a little smaller portions here. So we're going to do um, chicken, we're going to do rice, yeah, I'm just going to use my hands because that's a little easier, it's all my food, it'll be okay. Um, and then we've got our vegetables, so I have, we've had Brussels sprouts this, this week, and so we've got a little bit extra, we'll pop in there, super simple, meal number one, don't have to mix it all together, you can, if you're one that doesn't like your food touching, um, it's probably a good one. They even make like portioned little meal containers. As you can get. So chicken rice vegetable, number one, super easy. You can season that, salt, pepper, however you want to do it. Those are the real most basic ones. Um, or you can make a variety of things. I have a, I don't know if these are in frame, but we've got a variety of seasonings here. So there is a reason that the old world had wars over spices. The um, This this right here is, is literally nutritional gold here. Um, just in, in terms of 
varying your your palate, varying your meals, uh, is be able to get different tastes with pretty much the same food. So we can put some harissa seasoning on that chicken. We can put some taco seasoning. We can put some gyro seasoning, uh, barbecue seasoning, whatever you want to do. Same thing with sauces. You make that whatever you want to make it. All right. So that's our super easy basic number one. Next one, we're going to do my favorite, pretty much my go-to. I've done a series on this before. We're going to do burrito bowls. So again, we're going to start with our rice. Usually about half a cup is a serving. But again, I'm going to try to make this rice go a little bit longer since we're towards the end. Um, we're going to do our chicken. You can measure this out for an appropriate serving if you like to. Um, from there, we take our taco seasoning. We basically just dump that all over that chicken. Make that as taco -y as you would like to. And then we usually get some, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of cooking here, so that's just going to be all prepped together. Um, but if this is in frame, we do have a whole tray here of uh, fresh vegetables. And so we're going to kind of show you a variety of that. We're going to put a pan, uh, a little bit lower heat. We're going to get some vegetables going on that. We may come back to this. So what I do in my burrito bowls is we get an onion. We'll do a half of an onion here. Um, and then obviously you can put whatever you'd like to in this, but I'm going to just do pretty much what we have on hand is, is usually how I, I prep. Um, caveat here is that if the ingredients are troublesome to you, if you're like, oh, I'm not sure what to get. A lot of this is just going to be experimentation, right? I've been eating for 30 years now, and I have a pretty good idea of what I like, what I don't like. Um, and sometimes as you get older, you may need to experiment with that a bit. Sometimes your taste buds change. Uh, do keep that in mind. If you haven't had something in a very long time, I recommend giving it another chance and see how it tastes. Still don't like it? That's fine. You don't like it. Um, but we'll do onions. We're going to do some peppers. I like to go red peppers just to um, add a little color and variety into this. I'm just going to use half of it for this. Half onion, half pepper. If you're meal prepping for multiple people, I would recommend using a bigger portion. Um, but we're just going to dice this up. Same deal. Like I said, I like to make it easy. Don't have to worry about all different kind of fancy cuts. We're just going to get real bite-sized pieces. We're going to dump that in there with it as well. Uh, so as I was saying about uh, grocery shopping, I, I buy like the same food every week and just use it in a variety of different ways. So this is kind of part of the fun, part of the experimentation. Um, it's just kind of making grocery shopping easier. So we just buy the same thing and kind of exploring different recipes and ways to kind of use those those ingredients in different ways. For example, again, we're using the same core ingredients. This is everything that I bought normally. Um, and we're just going to make five different kinds of meals with this food. All right. That's kind of the goal there. I'm going to use a zucchini. We'll use like half of this just for the sake of this demonstration. Um Again, you can throw whatever you'd like to in this burrito bowl. I usually, I've, I've started throwing zucchini in there just for a, a bit of extra veg. Um, I know that, you know, if you go to whatever kind of store you like getting your burrito bowls, probably not some zucchini in there, but, you know, you got to make this different from going out and buying it, you know, add a little special, add a little extra taste. If you don't like zucchini, don't put it in there. That's fine. Um, I just want to make this again accessible for you and being able to make cooking meal prepping easier. You know, this whole show is all about making uh, healthy eating, nutritional eating accessible, right? So is this going to be the most ideal way to prep these individual meals? No, but you're not here to learn how to be a master chef, right? At least not from me, I hope. Um, we are making this a, a process to get the food that we need and make it as accessible as possible. Um, I don't want to say easy. It is relatively simple. Uh, it's just 
putting some foods together, seasoning it, and then eating it. Um, is there more optimal ways to prep this, to season it? Absolutely. We would pick everything individually and make it specifically for that dish. But that's not our goal here today. We're trying to use as little cooking time to maximize our meals. That's what we're doing. So while that's going away, those are going to be our cooked vegetables. We're basically just going to throw those on top, mix it all together, and we'll call that a day. You put a little lime juice on there. If you have some salsa you want to throw in there as well, great option. So we'll call that done number two, well, half done number two. We'll just let that kind of go. Um, just again, basically just to show you how quick this is going to happen. So third bowl. So we've got our cooked vegetables. A um, little caveat here, a little pro tip. How you recommend undercooking your vegetables just a little bit. That way, if you're reheating, I hopefully you would reheat your lunch um, in the office, then in the microwave a couple more minutes, it won't make everything super mushy. I know that's sometimes a problem for some people. So a little bit undercooked. If you say, oh, this could probably use a couple more minutes, perfect, take it off the heat. Um, put it in your bowl. I also want to note, just through years of experience, if you put hot food in one of these, and then you put your lid on top, all that steam is going to further cook those vegetables. So be aware of that as well. So a couple options, undercook it a little bit more, or just leave the lid off until this is uh, kind of cooled off, and then cap it, put it in the fridge. All right, pro tips. This is all valuable information. I hope you're writing this all down. Um, Cool. So we're going to let this cook maybe just another minute. Still pretty raw on that. Uh, so our third dish, we're talking about cooked vegetables. We're going to go fresh now. So we're going to get a, a new container. So we're going to make some poke bowls. I've covered this again in the episode before, but just to show you the versatility of this, we're going to put a little bit of rice in there. We're going to put some vegetables. So we're going to put our other half of our red pepper. We're going to try to avoid some food waste here. So I'm going to, this one you can have some fun with. We're going to make, uh, I think we'll still dice this one up. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Sometimes if it's too much work to decide what kind of shapes you want to cut your food in, just chop it all up. It'll be fine. So we will put some, uh, probably not all of that, but we'll put a handful of that in there. And again, I usually go for color on this, so we've got some fresh pineapple. Let me push my extra pepper out of the way. We've got some fresh pineapple. We will chop up, toss that in there as well. So again, with the with the poke bowls, usually I try to get very fresh, wonderful kind of summer treats or lunch. Um, also, the nice thing about this, if you if you're gonna be somewhere that you are either you know or you, that you don't have a microwave or a way to heat your food up, or if you are unsure, this is a great option to go because you can eat it cold. Um, you know, you can heat your rice up. Let me take this out. Take that off the heat. We'll add that here in a bit. Um, but yeah, so we can we can eat this cold even with the rice. Um, certainly, obviously, go with cooked rice if you're at home. Uh, but that would really be the only component of this that you could warm up. Um, but I eat this cold all the time because again, it's easy to take. You don't have to go to the microwave. You don't have to heat it up in any way. So we got that. We're gonna add some carrot. Keep it easy. I'm just gonna grate it. And we're going to break that right into the bowl. Again, we talked about, I want to say, February. We did, or March, March, Nutrition Month. We talked about adding color to your meal. So we've got some orange, we've got some red, we've got some white, we've got some yellow. And we'll go a little bit more. Cool. We've got some carrot. Good. Boom. There we go. Um, usually I'll throw some cucumber in here. I don't have cucumber, so I am going to use some zucchini. I know that sounds really weird, but it's a very watery vegetable. So it'll, it'll play the part just fine. I think in the last episode we cut this into ribbons, but again, just for the sake of convenience, we're going to just chop this up into 
a little dice. So we can add some onions. Um, my recommendations, if you're really unsure, different kinds of onions. Um, I usually go red onions for when I'm eating onions raw. Yellow onions, sweet onions when you are cooking it. Um, obviously, there's some exceptions to that general rule of thumb, but typically the way I go. All right, so we've got some zucchini in there, a little bit of green. You can throw some spinach. You can just throw some Brussels sprouts if you want. Uh, but we're pretty much going to call that there. We'll throw our chicken right on the top. We'll put it on the side so you can see. And then again, secret to poke bowl, if you remember from last time, it is going to be our sauce, all in the sauce. So our, our cheap, awesome sauce, whatever we called it last time. We've got sriracha, staple in the household. Honey should be a staple in the household. And then some soy sauce, coconut aminos here. Mix the three up and drizzle over the top. And then you've got uh, your third dish right there, poke bowl. All right. I usually throw some bagel seasoning on top because I pretty much put that on everything. So I'm going to take a pause, go back to our burrito bowl. We're going to toss our veggies on there. Again, a little bit undercooked. Probably enough for two servings, but I'll just do half of it. All right. There. Um, so again, a little pro tip. I'm sure you do this if you were going to like chipotle or powder or anything with a bowl. Um, you grab it in there and just take that puppy out. And there you go. That's your meal number two. That's your burrito bowl. So we'll leave that. So we have three down. We're doing great. We're doing great so far. Um, next two, super fast. We have got our Cuban chicken bowl. So this one's real easy. As always, we'll start with our rice at the base. We're on a low on rice. There's going to be very child-like portions, but you get the idea. Uh, so, not that yet. We're going to take our head of cabbage. So, if you don't want to buy a head of cabbage, they they uh, make these very convenient little packets of cabbage and carrots, which is like coleslaw mix, which is pretty much all we need here. I'm going to cut off about that much. Very thinly sliced cabbage like you would in coleslaw. Again, very small portions just to give you an idea. I'm going to put some cabbage in there. I'm going to go back to our carrots. We're going to get that in there. Very, very easy dish. Make this for lunch pretty much once a week. Pretty sure I made this last month for Hispanic Heritage Month. We do it with beef, usually how we go. So we'll mix that cabbage and carrots up there a little bit. And then we've got some apple cider vinegar, a little tangy on that. We just dress, boom. And then we will add our chicken on top. And then usually, so with um, with this dish specifically, you can certainly season this to be kind of more Hispanic, um, you can do um, whatever you want to do, some lime juice, some taco seasoning again if you want to. Um, but one thing that we do, usually make a, uh, we call sofrito. So we um, make extra and we freeze it. And so if you've never um, heard of this trick before, make extra sauce and freeze it in like an ice cube tray. And you have these little, little things of sauce that you can just pop in um, for dinner and make it super easy for you. Um, so this sofrito sauce is basically the same thing that you see here. We've got um, carrots, celery, pepper, next some cilantro in here, olive oil, and that's, I mean, that's a great sauce right there. So we just blend that up and we can mix that in with the chicken. Um, if you want to make a batch of this, as we talked about before, put a batch, kind of coat it on your chicken. In this situation, I would probably just individually warm this up um, while I'm meal prepping and just pretty much just drizzle it on top. Um, as I usually say, secret of a, of a lot of great recipes is the sauce, all right? The sauce boss here telling you that. Uh, so if you've got uh, some olives, usually kind of top that on top again, just a little bit of that tang. Great combo, chicken and rice, and some veg, just in a little different presentation, a little different flavor profile. That's the art dish number four. All right. Our last one for today is the easiest 
maybe not the easiest, but um, the easiest way to use your leftovers. Um, probably not the most ideal container for this because we are going to put some soup. Um, so probably wouldn't use this, but just for the demonstration here, I will. Um, I lied. Let's use this bowl. So we've already got our rice in there. Um, remember back when we talked about pressure cooking your chicken, leaves a nice uh, broth. We can make some bone broth or just use the chicken stock. Or if you've got your own, you can do that. Um, so here it is. We're just going to pour this in there. This is making us some chicken soup. So we've got chicken and rice with our soup. And then the beautiful thing about this, you can put in whatever vegetables you have left over. We have all these cooked vegetables, which will do it nicely. And we'll just pop all that in there. And again, season to taste on that one. Some extra salt, probably a good thing. I understand that it is the middle of summer. You probably don't want soup, but um, give it a shot. If you gotta kind of figure out what's more important to you, using all your leftover food or staying in season with your meals. <laughs> so that is as simple as that one. It's literally just chicken rice and leftover vegetables. You can put, again, you got some celery, you got some onion, um, anything else that you'd like in there. Usually I like to top with a little avocado. Um, same thing for your poke bowl. You can throw in some avocado slices on there. Just want to see how good our avocado looks. This one's great. <laughs> so um, we'll put a little slice of that in there. Why not? For presentation purposes. Beautiful. All right, I'll put the other half in my, in my poke bowl. If you're very impressed by my use of the back of the fork for scooping that out, I am too. Just came to me. Uh, Pokey bowl. Boom. There we go. All right. So I'm going to clear down a little bit so we can get one last final shot because uh, we are bringing it home here. We've got five different dishes all made with the same core of chicken and rice. Bring it back through it. We've got our chicken soup. We've got our poke bowl. We've got our burrito bowl slightly undercooked, so when we reheat it, it'll be perfectly textured. Um, we've got our Cuban chicken bowl, and we've got our classic chicken rice and veg. There you have it, folks. That's what we've got for you. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any other questions, if you have some other great recipes you want to share with us, please do. You can reach out to us on Instagram at Lenovo Fitness, or you can just shoot me an email um and we'll kind of have a little chat we also got the teams definitely one uh would like some conversation in there so if you've got something that you want to add to to the conversation put in there but otherwise i hope you all enjoy your july 4th holiday hope you enjoyed this little meal prep segment and when you come back maybe give this another another watch get yourself ready for the following week um and try some try some new recipes all right we'll see you next month